There's your walking, talking, high-fiving Joel bot. Okay, I'll give you a little bit of how I made Joel Bot. Going to the uh, music computer room. Basically, I decided I'd base it on my four servo robot walking base, which can be controlled by just a, a servo controller, or you can control it by, in this case, I'm using a Apollo Lu Mini Maestro 6 because I wanted to do other functions as well. Um, hang on here, I'm going to collapse. I'm going to try to take this camera off the tripod. That's what's making things so awkward. There we go. And of course, this project I put up on Thingiverse quite a while ago. So you can. I'll go up there and make that if you want something that's real basic for classrooms to uh, build a walking robot. Or if you're just getting into 3D printing, then that's fine too. You can find it in the Robot Hut stuff. But picture-wise, I had to start by designing some feet. Basically, due to the cartoon nature of the design, you're not going to get mechanical linkage inside the, the legs. So that meant I'm going to have to go electromechanical, which meant servos in each feet and servos up in each hip and without making a robot even bigger it's already so big I was having a hard time filming as you could tell earlier I couldn't get far enough away with the camera to keep the whole robot in frame because the the room is smaller the robots too big take your pick but um, I need to use the smallest strongest servos I could find so I decided to go with uh, these guys which I've used before they were pretty powerful for their size and I'm going to run it on four AA batteries, so two AA batteries in each foot plus the servo. So that determined the size of the feet. And based off the size of the feet, that determined the scale of the rest of the robot. And it's roughly, um, I went with a 250, no, 225% of the uh, build size of the Joel robot that's up on Thingiverse. So I started by designing the feet. Here's uh, basically all the parts that are required to go on the feet. And I have a few of the reject parts here down below. But basically the main foot, which holds everything together, just a foot cap, <clears throat> the leg or servo linkage, battery contacts, which you can buy off eBay, <coughs> rubber grommets for the ratchet wheels, the ratchets themselves, this is a paper clip which is used as axles, a hip part which you 3D print, another uh, decorative part, and of course the servo that we just talked about and it's some extension wires. But what it really comes down to is you slide the battery contacts inside there so that you can crimp the batteries in. You install the ratchet wheels in here with, with pins. The servo screws into this mount this hole in the back is for the pivot point on the rear of the leg and the front of the leg attaches to the servo once that all comes up there's a, a decorative piece which I slide down which will eventually get glued up at the hip then there's the hip piece which the leg pushes into and the hole is so that you can get in to secure the servo horn to the servo once it's assembled the servo horn or glues in here the wires come out of, of this groove. Then you've got your main lower body part. This is going to the stack which glues to the upper body, but the servos themselves push in one from either side and their wires route out through here. So we can go through a bit of that. The uh, All of the parts were printed, well, let's go back out here, you can see. 
all of the parts were printed on the uh, any cubic i3 mega with the exception of the hollow body and the hollow head they were both printed on the uh, neva and let's see if we have any other build pictures here that might interest you that's a close-up of the battery contacts like so you can buy them right on ebay close-up of the little servo <coughs> there's the uh, ratchet wheels that you 3d print the rubber grommets that are on there you can you can buy in all kinds of places you can buy them on ebay you can uh, buy them in rubber grommet kits and uh, in the tool shops around town they're very inexpensive the bottom of the foot where the batteries go showing putting in one of the battery contacts there's two of them down in place there's the uh, leg part. First thing you want to do for you assemble anything is to feed those wires up through there because you'll have a heck of a time feeding them in if you don't. And slide the cosmetic part down out of the way that's going to attach up at the hip later. Close up of the ratchet wheels. Here I'm taking that jumbo paper clip and cutting small axles for the actual ratchet arms. There's a, a front arm and a rear arm because the wheels on the bottom when you have a old school shuffling action walking type robot the wheels have to lock in one direction in order for it to uh, to walk otherwise it would just shuffle back and forth here's the rear one when it's installed you can see how it hangs out and there's the one in the front and there it is with the wheels installed the ratchet wheels installed so next you get your servo and bolt it in place it's held in with with two screws on the block the screws are still laying here and you need to use a, a little two dollar servo tester which you can get off ebay because it has they have three positions when you first power them up the knob will control where the servers if you poke this little button the next position will center a servo exactly on center and that's what we need we want to get on center and then put the servo horn on as close as straight up and down as you can get it the next position in there it just makes a servo swipe uh, from end to end so the testers are good for centering your servos when you're building things like these where you need to mechanically have the horn right and this kind kind of an awkward picture but this is the rear of the foot rear ratchet ratchet wheels this is the servo but it's showing the wires all coming out and the uh, leg part is actually snapped in place at this point this picture is a little easier see it's vertical here i've i've cut the wires off the servo the plug attached them to the new longer leads which went up and also extended my battery uh, power up through the leg and using the servo tester again get the servo centered get your leg exactly centered straight up and down and then you can go ahead and and super glue it I purposely made a slot so that there'd be adjustment because none of the servos will put the horn exactly in a 90 degree angle when they're in dead center they just don't and it's gonna be a lot easier to program this thing later on if, if you already know where your servos are all centered there it is with the uh, foot shell put over the top and the wires dangling out the top of the whole thing here's that hip piece right here you can see that you feed the wires through and bring them out the top the next thing I'm going to do is put glue around this and it'll eventually slop down there and shove this into the hip piece and then push this part up into this recess but the uh, this is basically giving us a way to mount this whole leg assembly to the next servo the circle and here's where the the plate on the next servo horn once they call servo horns the round plate that's where that's going to be attached this is the Neva uh, doing a uh, hollow print of the body and I had to think of a way I was going to you know get into these things so I don't know that there's a picture but one of the first things I did was to uh, cut a hole for the speaker because there's a sound system in there with a sample of Joel with his normal outro greeting of telling you to be kind to each other and uh, high-fiving and all that good stuff so I had a hole there and I made up a little grill which I then I could glue over the the hole and I ended up using that grill for the hole that I cut in the back of the head later so I could get the LEDs in there and then making a larger version of that grill to cover the hole I had to cut in the back of the body so I could put servos in and the controller and all that kind of stuff but to mount the servos I 3d printed some plates which had mounts that the servos would screw to 
and then basically glued the plates onto the sides. Obviously, I had to slice up the uh, the Joelbot model that was on Thingiverse. Besides, you know, changing the scale. These are uh, little metal plates that I roughly cut out, and uh, the reason they're there is the arms are going to be held on with magnets. That way, it makes it easier for shipping, storing, and if someone grabs an arm and decides to uh, pull on it or turn it or wants to pose it, you don't have to worry about them breaking the servo. Here we have the back view showing the slot that I cut in the side of the body for the whole servo arm assembly to go in and be glued in place. You can see a little bit of the uh, audio speaker board there where I mounted the uh, power switch. And there's a better shot of the uh, modified audio circuit with the back open. And there's with the grill, which isn't glued on at this point. I just set it there, the larger grill I made for the back to cover the hole that I had to cut. These are the arms, and um, that's showing the, the magnets that I glue in to the ends of the arms. There's the uh, hollow Joel head being pre printed on the Neva. And this is before any cleanup, before any sanding for the problems that the Neva has with undercuts. This is showing the, uh, well, you've got the front of the body, you get the grill that's going to be on the back of the head, and these are the two jumbo LEDs that I end up putting in the uh, head for the eyes. These are controllers that I like to use for these sorts of things. I'm using the, uh, you can freeze frame this, but it's the Pololu uh, Mini Maestro 6 channel controller. It means you can, it, the 6 channels can be used as servo outputs, or they can be used as digital outputs, or they can actually be used as inputs for triggers. It's a very useful device, but it needs a very clean, stable power supply to run. And when you've got a lot of servos running off a few batteries, it'll it'll whack out this unit. So you need to add in this little uh, five volt. In this case, they call it a, a step up voltage regulator, but actually it, it's a step up, step down, it'll buck boost. So if I put six volts into it, I still get five out. If I put as as low as three quarters of a volt into it, I'll still get five volts out. So I don't use this to control any of the servos, they draw too much current. Its only purpose is to take the 6 volts that's going to control the servos, regulate it, and just control the uh, Mini Maestro. It'll make it run. It'll, it'll keep working longer than the servos will, voltage-wise. There it is, uh, getting wired up. You can see at this point that I've glued the body to this lower hip part that has the servos, and all those wires are coming up through. Each one has a particular place it's got to go through to get controlled. There's a little bit of the uh, code that I stuck into the controller for the simple routine you just saw. Back shot with the back door open. Front shot. All before I decided to paint it. There it is with the uh, Thingiverse. Standard size off Thingiverse um, Joel bot to give you an idea of the size increase. I mean, I really would have liked to have used larger, stronger servos, but then the, the feet would have been bigger, the scale for the hips would have been bigger, the whole robot would have been way bigger. So this was like the compromise to get it done. And after that, I just took it off to the shop and I uh, hosed it down with a little bit of uh, silver. Um, it's kind of a hammered silver to give it a texture. Then I took a little bit of black paint with a brush and touched up a few things and a little bit of red paint just to touch up a few things, give it a little bit more personality. And there you have it. Enjoy.